now we have a company called Clarity, their products are running in London. So um, as Clarity, we develop Ethereum technology, basically infrastructure and tools for people to develop decentralized applications. So yeah, there's a slide there. Um, I want to briefly um, demo like one tool um, that was recently released. It's the Clarity Bowman model. Thomas is going to use it tomorrow, but we'll mainly do um, like an example of how to develop that in our community. So this um, Clarity Browser is what we released recently and allows you to access Ethereum applications in your, in your browser. Um, so, ah, okay. Sorry. Just realized no one could hear you. Oh, is it too internet. quiet? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Video. Ah, on the video. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so it allows you to um, to access um, Ethereum applications in your in your browser. Um, so one thing that that we are really excited about is that it not only allows you to access them, but in a very secure way. So there's one tool called a, um, a trusted signer that encapsulates um, everything that's related to signing transactions and related to your private keys. So your private keys are never directly dealt by uh, this trusted signer. Um, so the wallet is not only a wallet, but also allows you to access um, and manage uh, smart contracts on Ethereum um, and can also host um, applications. So um, when we started uh, Parity, we did a completely new implementation of the Ethereum protocol in, in Rust. So right now we are one of the biggest, if not the biggest, um, Rust, um, Rust project, or like in terms of, yeah, in terms of uh, current action on the, on the repository, I think it's, it's one of the, um, the most vivid ones. Um, we also did a new implementation of the um, JavaScript API. So initially, um, there was an, a JavaScript API implemented by people at the Ethereum Foundation um, called Web3.js. We did a new one, and um, Tomek is going to show this tomorrow because this is what you effectively use if you want to develop decentralized applications on top of um, on top of the Ethereum blockchain. So. In order to do so, the only thing, you don't need to know Rust or anything. You need like basic familiarity with JavaScript and, yeah? So I've worked a lot with Web3. What is different in the Parity case? Um, I think it's better if you ask Tomet because he worked on it. Um, some things are related to um, why we did it, are related to the trusted signer as well. And, but he can give a bit of better overview of, of what's different. But given, so, the guy who, so Marek, who initially yes, worked a lot about, on, on this stuff, like, I mean, he's now busy working on, web, on the Parity JS. So um, together with Tomek, and uh, yeah, I guess he had a lot of learnings from what he did on Web3 JS. Is it compatible? Like, just, in pa just in parts, I think, yeah. Yeah. So um, when we did the most recent release, we also released some protocol, um, um, some protocol improvements, namely a warp sync. So when you now fire up your parity node on your laptop, usually within eight, nine minutes, you're synced to the complete Ethereum blockchain, which is quite nice. Um, so next steps like for, for the company are the light client development, um, proof of authority, DAP hosting, these kinds of things. So both improvement of the Ethereum protocol, but also extension of the protocol for say private blockchains, plus, um, plus better hosting and access management of applications. Um, a very recent thing we announced, and that's also gonna be the topic of the um, meetup on Monday, is a project called Polkadot, which is basically what I would call an internet of blockchain. So, I mean, many of you might have heard of this um, dichotomy between private and public blockchains, who's gonna win, but effectively, I mean, at the moment, we're like really, really early and like all these different blockchains need something to relay and um, like a kind of a, an additional layer for them to interact with. And this is what Polkadot tries to provide in the future. So Gavin is gonna speak about this 
on, um, on Monday, like the ideas we have in mind. Yeah, otherwise, like this is just a, a recent, um, recent statistics about the commits. So it's an open source project, um, but we are also hiring, like if anybody's interested in either Rust development or development of decentralized applications or helping with the browser integration, that's all um, stuff we, we, um, we look for help for. And then, um, ah yeah, this is quickly the agenda of the workshop for tomorrow. So if you're interested in, um, in attending the workshop that Tommy is gonna do, um, like here are the requirements. I can also, I think Senya maybe can also send them or I can send them by email again. Um, but what he wants to do basically is to show how to do DAP development locally, um, an intro to the Parity JS library and the registration of the application in the registrar so that other people can access the application as well. Um, let me just maybe quickly. Uh, quickly demo a few things about the um, about the wallet. So what you can see right now is um, the parity integration in the browser allows you to access the different wallets you have. You can directly um, see how many different coins you you might have, like whether people have sent you any. Um, that's quite nice. It hosts an address book, so you can store. Oops, you can store all the um, all your friends' information, export, import, um, sort them, sort by tags. This is stuff we already have. Um, it comes directly with a with a couple of um, decentralized applications, um, namely like some registrars, uh, a token deployment. So if you want to create your own token, so I mean at this stage it's all like a bit play school and. Um, just to give you a, kind of a sense of where things are heading um, with, this, um, with this browser integration. So a token, the token deployment um, DAP is basically um, kind of a, a contract template. So you can just say, if you say deploy a new contract, you can just um, pick the, the wallet you want to deploy it from. So I could use my hot, hot wallet decide a token name, decide um, like the, the abbreviation, the, the shorthand notion for the token, token supply, and then deploy the token, whatever you want to do with it. Um, and then, yeah, it comes with a, um, with a status overview of the network, so you can see like how far you're synced. Um, and as I said, and this is one thing I would like to quickly demo, because it's, um, so say you um, is about the sign up. So let me send some ether now from my wallet to let's say I sent something to Gav. Um, <coughs> should pay him back maybe for a beer. Um, and then you say send and then you have this pop up and this is the only time when you should um, um, oops. Mm. Oh, something. Okay, I, I, it seems I don't know my password anymore. <laughs> ah, no, it's caps lock, okay. Okay, and then, um, and then it's being processed. So another thing that we integrated, you might wonder why there's like this really, really strange, um, strange background. So it's, um, it's not because we like kind of this, um, this pink um, thingy. It's, um, it's for you to realize whether you are like in a secure mode or not, so that nobody can, um, can kind of, if, because it's like hosted in the browser, if you were like, just on a web page, nobody could um, could pretend um, this is like your your wallet, and then all of a sudden, like you type in your your password. So you can pick. It's it's kind of a um, there's a random generator behind. So unless somebody has access to your 
local um, computer, there's no way anybody could know what the particular pattern is you have on your computer. So as long as you kind of see this pattern, you can be sure whenever you type in or your password to, the, to your private keys that everything's fine. I mean, we don't um, force you to use this strange ping. You can pick whatever. But I think it's a really nice way of like improving the security of, of this stuff. So um, yeah, just as a quick overview of the parity thing. So yeah, I mean, um, Tamek is going to do the workshop tomorrow. Um, and for anybody who wants to hear a lot more, then come to our meetup on Monday. Thanks. Any questions? Otherwise, yeah. Do I need to run a full node in order to use parity? Or? Yeah, you would, um, you would run a full, full node, but it's like really low in footprint. So, I mean, as I said, like in, within eight minutes you're synced, or okay. maybe 12 you're synced. Um, and we're working on making inst installing and upgrading very, very easy. So we have like a, an experimental one-click installer for Mac as well. And, um, and also we are working on auto updates, which I mean, some people might like, other people might not like so much, but I think it's useful. Yeah. Does it make more sense to um, have remote nodes and just push these locally and push related transactions? Uh, even if, I mean, by, no. I mean, that's like a, I think it's a very philosophical question how far you think you should have, have everything local or like some things kind of centralized. I mean, I don't know if, if this is what you mean, like whether you should. Yeah, basically cent centralize the, the, the nodes. And, and I mean, not completely, but basically, yeah. should, a, should a person and a normal consumer interacting with the blockchain, should they host their own node or just a key and relate so the transactions in a signed manner to you? So long run, probably not, or it's like a mixture. I mean, probably you just run a light client, and then if it's like something where you need more trust, then you either refer to a trusted node who hold, which holds the entire chain and then, or you download it yourself. I, I guess it depends like on the use cases you have in mind. Um, and with keys, like it will also depend like whether we're gonna see more infrastructure like all the Bitcoin online wallets with like multi-signature um, behind or like a two-factor authentication behind. I mean, the nice thing with Ethereum is that you can like, um, pick whatever authentication you want, like any authentication model, you can involve other people. So there could be a multitude of things you wanna, you wanna look at. I don't know, I mean, it's gonna be interesting to see where kind of this trade-off happens between fully decentralized and like semi-decentralized and, and what are the, where's the optimum for which use case. Okay, then I let the IPFS discussion continue. <laughs>